Good morning. And welcome to worship on this joyful Christmas Eve. It's not every year we get to begin our Christmas Eve um, in worship on a Sunday morning, but since Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, here we are. It's wonderful to have each and every one of you joining us in the beauty of this space, on the beauty of this day, in a spirit of worship this morning. It is no small thing that you have decided to spend your Christmas Eve morning here with us in worship. I want to extend a special welcome to those of you who might be joining us for the first time here at St. John's, or the first time in a long time. Of course, each and every one of you is welcome in this place. I do want to remind you, everything you need for the service is in your bulletins, including hymns and scriptures, so you just need to follow along, very user-friendly. Um, but of course, the most important thing for each and every one of you to know, whether visitor or not, is that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, it is our deep desire to meet you where you are, and most importantly, to share God's love with you. So welcome. We're going to suspend the long list of announcements for today because it's a joyful, special day. It's a holiday. Um, so we're just going to set those aside. There are a few reminders in your bulletin with regards to um, the last day to get your offering in so that it counts for this year. I'll leave that to your reading. Another reminder for those who are taking the poinsettias to our homebound members, there are cards from the stampers to include with that, whether you grab one um, from other parts of the church after this service or you come back later in the week. There's a basket of cards and they're beautiful, um, so you should definitely remember to grab one of those. All right. As always, I think the best way to enter into worship, even on a special day like this, perhaps even more so on a special day like this, is with a deep breath. So I'm going to invite you to join me in taking a deep breath as we breathe in God's spirit that surely fills this place and fills each one of us. As we exhale, we set aside all the many things that I know are busying your hearts and your minds on a day like today so that we can be fully present as we focus our hearts and minds and lift our voices to worship our newborn king.
Please be seated. I often hear people say, how did it get to be Christmas? Referring to how quickly time passes leading up to the holidays. But in terms of our Advent journey, however, how it got to be Christmas is by way of love, hope, joy, and as of today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, peace. Each Sunday, we lit a candle as a reminder that the light that we seek in a world of darkness and unknown was, indeed, coming closer and closer as the birth of Christ approached. If you remember way back, we lit the candle of love, reminding us that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not even a difficult lighter. We lit the candle of hope, reminding us that the world is in need of healing and wholeness. We lit the candle of joy, reminding us that it is deeper and fuller than happiness. Joy is an awareness that we are being held by our creator and everything's going to be okay. And today, we light the candle of peace, and we are reminded that peace is a gift from God. It starts within and spreads through acts of care, compassion, and kindness. All of these candles are lit again on this day of Christ's birth, and we remember our long journey to the manger, giving thanks that Christ has given us all that we need, hope, peace, joy, and love. Of course, no candle burns all year long, But long after this Advent candle has been blown out and all the Christmas lights find their way safely back to the corner of the basement, the light of Christ will still be shining, and it will still need sharing, and it will be our lives, our actions, our way of being, our hearts that will be that light, the light that this world and all who abide in it desperately needs. Now, since this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and Christmas Eve combined in one. It's kind of a silly year where those two things fall on the same Sunday. We want to give peace its moment to shine, literally. So we will wait just a moment to light the Christ candle while the gospel is being read, inviting the light of the newborn king into our midst and into our hearts. But something to ponder throughout this service and this day, something to reflect on, no pun intended, is how will you let your heart be the light of Christ in the year ahead? How will you, what you say, what you do, the spirit with which you do it, how will you illuminate, shine, the loving, hopeful, joyous, peace-filled light of Christ? Amen.
Okay, could I have... Yeah, thank you. Oh. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. I brought a really special book with me this morning. Other children can come forward. <laughs> come on up. It's good to see you. Yeah. Can you make room for our new friends? Let's make room. Yeah, come on up. Other children can come forward. Yeah. Very good. Are you all excited? Yes. yes. Good morning. Yeah, that's great. Anybody else? Come on up. All right. So I brought this very special book with me this morning, and I want to read it to you. And along the way, I may ask you a question, okay? This is called The First Christmas. So, I want you to listen carefully. Many, many days and nights ago, in a far-off town in Nazareth, a woman named Mary was praying. And an angel, do you know what an angel is? Yeah? An angel came down in a cloud with golden light and said, fear not. Don't be afraid, Mary. God is looking in a very special way at you. You will have a son and call him Jesus. He will be great and his kingdom will never end. An angel also visited Joseph. Now Joseph and Mary were going to get married. And the angel said to Joseph, I want you to take care of Mary and this baby. Yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> Crazy. Are you still flying? Well, Joseph and Mary got married. Yeah, they had a big wedding reception. Joseph was a carpenter. Do you know what a carpenter is? What is a carpenter? Yeah, someone who makes things out of wood, who carves wood. Well, Joseph made a crib and wooden toys. And Mary sewed clothing and blankets, and everyone was getting ready for the birth. But Jesus was not going to be born at home or at the hospital. Where were you born? Yeah, pretty much all of us were born at the hospital, but not this baby, because the Roman emperor said that everyone had to go back to their hometown and they had to pay their taxes. So Joseph's family came from Bethlehem and that was 70 miles away. Yeah, 70 miles and it was winter and the baby was just about ready to be born and Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem. So Mary packed some food and they mounted their donkey. Yeah, do you, what, what sound does a donkey make? Yeah, yeah, you've really got your donkey voice on this morning. Yeah. Do you know what's so special about donkeys? They can carry very heavy loads. They can carry a lot. Yeah. Well... They mounted their donkey, and their journey of 70 miles was very long. Some days were rainy, some were windy, and at night the air was cold. Can you do a shiver for me? Ooh, ooh, yeah. And it took Joseph and Mary several days to reach Bethlehem. 
And when they got to Bethlehem, well, everything was very busy, it was crowded, lots of people were there, and all the places to stay were filled up. Now, when you go on vacation or you go away from home, where do you stay? You stay at a hotel, right? Or you stay with relatives. Well, Joseph and Mary, they were looking for a hotel, an inn, and, they, and Joseph knocked on the door. Can you knock for me? That's it. That's a good knock. <laughs> Joseph knocked on the door. And then he knocked on the, another door and another door. The answer was always the same. We don't have any room. We're filled up. And then Mary started to cry. And the donkey was tired. And so one of the people who had an inn, a little hotel, well, he felt sorry for them. And he took them around back to the barn. It's called a stable. Do you know who lives in a stable? Animals. Animals live in the stable. And the innkeeper said, you can sleep in here. And my animals will keep you warm. And Mary and Joseph were very grateful. And they filled, they made a little bed out of straw. And they made a crib for Jesus. And then they rested. And then during the middle of the night, Jesus was born. He was born in a stable, in a barn, in hay. And then there's a field that was close by, and there were shepherds. Do you know what a shepherd is? Someone who herds sheep. sheep. And these shepherds were, well, they were watching their sheep that night, and they heard singing. And the angel Gabriel came down and visited the shepherds, and the shepherds were afraid. And Gabriel said, don't be afraid. I have very good news for you. Jesus, our Savior, is born in Bethlehem. And so the shepherds were very excited. They started jumping up and down, and guess what? They left their sheep right there in the field, and they went to Bethlehem. And they were guided by a very bright light in the sky. And they found the baby, Jesus. And they knelt down. And then there were three kings, three very, very important kings. They saw a shining star up in the sky, and they knew what it meant. They wanted to follow the star, and they wanted to search for Jesus. Their names were Caspar, Melchior, and Belshazzar. And they followed that star for miles and miles and miles until it took them to Bethlehem, and they found Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. And what did they bring? They brought gifts. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the people of Bethlehem saw this, and they knelt down to worship Jesus. And everyone was filled with joy now that Jesus the Savior was born. So guess what? Today, thousands of years later, Christians all over the world remember the birthday of Jesus which is tomorrow. That's correct. And what day do we call that? We call it Christmas. And what kind of things do we hear on Christmas? We hear Christmas carols, sing, dance, bells, right? People go to church, and we give each other what? Gifts, just like the wise men. So... I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas, okay? So thank you for, thank you for coming today. Yes?
You do? Good. Yeah. Do you want to take a look at Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus? Come on. Stand up. Come up. I want you to take a peek at this. Yep. Let's come over here. Yep. You can go up there. Yep. Yep. Can everybody see? This is Mary. Do you see Mary? And this is Joseph. Yep. Let me get Joseph for you. Here's Joseph. Yep. And here is the baby Jesus. And he's sleeping in what? He's sleeping in a manger. And what's in that manger? Hey. Yep. Well, let's say a prayer, okay? God, thank you for baby Jesus who grew up just like us. And thank you for his love and for the way God comes to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, This scripture reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
Now in that same region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them, and Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it has been told to them. 
Please be seated. God had always spoken to prophets so that the people could understand God's way and God's will. God had always adopted kings and messengers to fulfill God's purposes. But never, ever did God come in such completeness as God comes in the Incarnation. The wholeness of God was born on Christmas. The wholeness of His Word came to earth. What is so radical, so, so
so extraordinary about this event is that people had an understanding of God who was untouchable. A God who would never, who would never be so humble. Who would never get down into the nits and grits of earth. People understood God as remote, somewhere up there, out of touch, out of reach. And on this Christmas day, we celebrate the God who chose to be with us in all our struggles, in all our strife, A God who even took it upon himself, God's self, to understand death. And so, as we gather around this table, we celebrate the God whose unstoppable love can never be stopped. And so we are reminded of those words that on the night of his betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread. And after he had given God thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after breaking the bread, Christ took the cup. And after giving thanks for it and blessing it and before sharing it with those he loved, his disciples around the table, he said to them, this is my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, Do it in remembrance of me. Jesus did pause to say grace, to give thanks to God for the gifts he shared. So I invite you to join me in prayer as we do the same. God, we come to this table full of celebration at the birth of your son, Jesus, but also aware that it was for our sake that he was born to give his life for us in love. Gathering around this table now, we remember the many paradoxes and mysteries that surround our faith. Body broken, that we might be made whole. Blood poured out, that we might be filled up. Life created and born among us, that our lives may be reborn. We ask that you bless this bread, bless this cup, and make your presence known to us as we take, eat, drink, and remember. Amen. A few housekeeping notes, important things to keep in mind. This morning we will be sharing in communion by means of intinction, which is a little different than plate communion and has some participation. So there will be two communion stations, one in either transept, so in um, on the Richardson Avenue side as well as the library side. At each station, there will be um, someone holding a basket of bread, a um, a chalice filled with grape juice. There are also individually packaged elements, if that's more your style for whatever reason. Um, So please make your way to the center aisle, up the center aisle to either side where you will receive communion, and then make your way back to your seats by means of the side aisle. A special note, if you are in need of gluten-free elements, please make your way to Reverend Dale's side. He'll be over on the Richardson Avenue side. There is a basket of gluten-free crackers as well as a chalice that is set aside for gluten-free use. So if you're gluten-free, make your way to Reverend Dale's side. If you are unable to make your way forward for whatever reason, not to worry, please just stay seated. And after the line, uh, everyone goes through the line, um, Reverend Dale and I will make our way down the aisles to look for you. So just give us a wave to make sure that everyone um, is fed um, at this table. 
At this time, I want to invite uh, our communion servers forward, Jerry and Sally. And starting from the front, I invite you to come, for all things are now ready.
Let us pray. O gracious and wondrous God, we give you thanks for the miracle of Jesus Christ, for his life, his witness, his death and resurrection. We thank you that you feed us spiritually to heal us and make us whole. And we thank you for this meal which you have provided. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the risen, reigning Lord of the universe. Amen. Before you go your separate ways this morning, I do invite you to share the love, hope, joy, and peace of Christ with one another. Find someone you don't know or haven't seen in a while. Let them know you are glad they are here. And then as you go from this place to have yourself a Merry Christmas, I pray that you do indeed let your heart be the light, that we might reflect and embody the light of Christ born among us this day. And as you live into that call of Christ, that call of Christmas, may you know that the love of God surrounds you, the peace of Christ sustains you, and the power of God's Holy Spirit goes with you and stays with you this day and always. Joy to you, joy to the world. Amen and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.